Now when we do two, look, I go like this, like I'm going to do a back slap. Two. Two, this way. Two. How you doing? My name is Felix Conley Jr. I represent the Attila Balintz Wax System. I'm a four-time national full contact weapons fighting champion and the current light heavyweight world champion of 2018. Um, the 2020 games were supposed to happen in the Philippines and I was supposed to defend the world championship representing the United States, but due to COVID that didn't happen. So hopefully I'll be out there next year and that'll be my uh, retirement fight from the, uh, you know, the whole recap and sport fighting and I'll just continue to teach and everything like that. Um, normally in those uh, full contact weapons fighting tournaments, it's kind of looked down upon um, to traditional uh, Escrimadores and uh, Arnis players because you get into a lot of people just pulling into each other and just hitting, 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 and it really doesn't show the heart. Um, a way to win one of those full contact weapons fighting matches, you know, you have to look beautiful when it comes into your striking. You have to also defend, and then you also have to use your check hand and disarm. Three disarms and you're disqualified, or a TKO. So, at, before I trained with uh, Grandmaster, I was already a three-time national champion. So to me, I had the formula of I know what I'm doing. As soon as I started training with Grandmaster, and he started showing me to switch the stances, to go do all the spars, and just the years of knowledge he has, it is up my game tenfold, you know what I mean? So, um, as far as training with Grandmaster Attilo, um, it was great because as a person uh, that grows up watching all these movies, and, you know, uh, Van Damme and all this stuff, you you would hope that you could train with like a master and then he's in your corner and then you actually fight and use what you learn from a grandmaster and actually win. He was in my corner for the last national championship which I won and he was in my corner for a world championship. So that was a, a super big honor for me because I know a lot of people who um, train and practice as Prima maybe there are they don't know that there are a lot of venues that you can go and actually compete and put on the gear and, and actually hit you know what i mean uh, it's not the most fun when you get hit but there is a, a outlet for you to train and compete and use your moves you know um but yeah in 2018 the uh, nationals and the world he was in my corner and it was uh it was really good so it's a calm double gold and it was uh, super good uh, 
as far as continuing on the training, it's important for self-defense. And I'm from the Bronx, New York, and my studio is located in the Bronx, New York. As Screamer by itself is kind of a hard sell because I feel like not a lot of people know about it. So it's important for MMA life and, and different um, uh, platforms to show the art, show the validity of, of martial arts and, and weapons fighting and a scream. You know what I'm saying? It's important for cultural, um, for a cultural aspect, and it's important for actual martial arts aspect. You know, um, my background is boxing, kickboxing, Wing uh, Chun, Kung Fu. I've been doing uh, no gi since 1991. As soon as Boys Crazy started fighting, he started learning it because you need to learn. You know what I mean? Uh, a lot of people want to train with the knife. A lot of people, you know, want to. I, I don't want to get stabbed. I want to learn self defense. Well, this is you know a tool for it. empty hand with the with the stick with the knife, everything like that. Um, I live in New York, like I said, so, you know, it's not always nice over there and a lot of attacks happen with a weapon. So, my cell for Attila Valenza walks a Screamer and the whole the Screamer system, you sell it with open hand, then you add a knife, then you add the stick, and then there goes the validity of learning something like this in this modern day age. I know it's not a feudal era that people are just going and stick fighting and weapon fighting each other, but for two things, there is a sport aspect that's a great sport. When UFC first came out, everyone shunned mixed martial arts because it looked like a bunch of people beating each other, and now it's one of the biggest sports. When people look at um, a recap tournament or a full contact stick fighting tournament, they look at it, I don't even know what's happening. One, it's up to the practitioners to not look like, you know, bad when they're doing it. And two, it's up to uh, the people to just learn about Eskrima, Filipino martial arts, and to have a trained eye to it. And then you start to learn, you know, how it looks and how people win and everything like that. You know what I mean? Um, there goes the self-defense aspect, you know? You sell the self-defense with, okay, you can fight in a sport, or you don't have to fight in the sport aspect. You should just learn this in general because what if someone attacks you with a knife, a blade, or anything like that? That's to me, that's self-defense. You know, there's a lot of uh, fake martial arts out here that, of, of course, everyone knows like the memes and the bullshito and all that type of stuff that they just grab a knife and everything. You know, it's not realistic. You know, so you know.
This is my friend, what's your name? Tommy. Okay, how long have you been training? I've been training for a week. That's long Maybe enough. Not even a week. Okay, <laughs> that's, that's long enough. Okay, so there's a big difference yes. in the Balintawak you train and with the gear and without the gear. When you train with the gear, it's just the sport aspect of it. If you get hit a few times in your head or in the body, it's not gonna be the end of the world, but you wanna train like it's the end of the world because you wanna train to fight as if you don't have any gear on and train to fight like everything will hurt, okay? So sure. these are a few things I like to do, okay? When we stand, it's a, when we hold our stick, I only do it three fingers. Three fingers? Mm -hmm. okay. If you hold too much, this is what sport fighters do. Oh. And this is what's not a good habit. Sport fighters do this because it makes their stick faster and lighter because they want to fan you up and down. It's not really a powerful strike and it's just for the decorative movement, oh, yeah. but it's not really powerful as opposed to like a full swing that Attilo teaches, okay? So three fingers right here and then I bring it like that. Another reason you wouldn't want to just keep it like this yep. is because you do not have any, maybe like this, they'll kind of do it like that. You do not have any reach. And also when you go for a swing, this is a disarm. Oh, yeah. Super not good, right? Yeah. So you want to keep the butt of the stick or the puño short. You don't want to do it too much because what happens? As you hit and strike and fight, it starts to loosen up and then you'll eventually throw it or someone strong will hit it right out of your hand. So even before you learn how to strike, you learn how to hold the stick. So anytime I'm training a new person or someone that's fought before, this is what we do. Put three fingers on the bottom of your stick. You see how you set up like you're playing baseball? Like you pick where you want to go. Yeah. Because you got all these little wrinkles and folds in your hand. So sometimes you just grab it and it's like not comfortable oh, okay. yet. You know what I mean? So I kind of like sweet spot. Okay. My hand is never going to move after you put this in. Okay. It's there. Yep. So it's closed. Okay. Once it closes up, now we're here. How do I stand? I'm in my stance with my hand behind my stick. Yeah. You want to keep the stick this much. The distance from your middle finger to your thumb above your head oh okay. yeah why if i'm actually trying to destroy in real life i'm probably gonna try to do up there yeah. so you want to keep it higher than anything not ridiculous yeah. but right there so okay. maybe this much so when i'm here then you touch down this hand is here and we're like that so now you're ready to fight whatever shots you want okay so a lot of times when people are fighting they're just going offensive when it comes to the sport aspect of things. So why a lot of people don't like the sport aspect is because you start like this and then the referee breaks you up. Okay, go. And then you just see two guys going like this. And then that's the end of the round. And then people go, who the hell, who the hell won that match? Because it's ugly. It's yeah. not how you're supposed to do. You yeah. think me and you are gonna fight like this in real life? No. Of course not. So when people, boom, bring it up, you maintain your distance and you keep your stick up. And yeah, I like that, you know what I mean? As soon as you, if I advanced, you want to start to like step back. So you don't want to ever step back crossing your feet. It's kind of like you do like a shuffle step back. So if I go forward, you go forward. Mm -hmm. If you come forward, I go backwards. And you learn this in basic boxing. Like do that, right? You step and drag or you step and drag, okay? Now, mostly all of the sport fighters keep the stick hand forward. So that's a classic Dose Pares thing and, and just the sport fighters in general, they keep their hand forward because they're looking to do all this stuff. They rarely switch hands, which is something that is important to learn how to do both, learning how to switch. Because sometimes what I want you to do is switch your hands and then switch your stance. Then switch your hand and switch your stance. And now do it fast. Hey, hey, hey. Bam! People try to do that right in between the switch. So the reason why you would switch, maybe this hand is getting tired from fighting, fighting, fighting. So we go to this hand now, right? Yeah, it, it's getting so tired and maybe the grip, you're getting sweaty and maybe the grip is ding, 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 ding. Let me switch the hand. So as soon as you switch the hand, boom, to the moon, no more stick. Yeah. So three disarms in, in the a full contact weapons fighting is considered a TKO. So super not good. So you want to learn how to take your stick, uh, hold on to your stick. One of the drills we do to hold on to the stick. Now notice we didn't even get into striking. I'm talking about stuff to keep your stick. A lot of stuff happens before you even learn how to hit someone, right? Okay, hold on to that stick real good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold on to your stick. Hold on to my stick. 
This is a drill that I like to do. We stand in a good, powerful stance. What I'm gonna do is try to take both of my sticks away from you. Okay. And you're gonna try to take both of them away from me. Okay. Okay, okay ready? Three, two, one, go. Non-stop, non-stop. So keep on, keep on, keep on a lot. Yeah. Maybe I'll push you forward. Maybe I'll put you back. Oh. Ah, maybe I'll turn you side, side like that. So this is important because how am I gonna build my striking power, right? Mm -hmm. How are you gonna build your defending power? If the grip is not good, your stick is gonna go and fly away, right? So a little bit more, ready to 10 seconds, ready to go, 10, nine, keep pulling, eight, go on, seven, this will happen, six, you six, five, 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 right? So if you notice the little step that I did, mm -hmm. it has nothing to do with, oh, I'm so strong because I barely have any muscles. It's just a matter of that momentum. Oh, yeah. So when we go back to fighting, uh -huh, yeah. hand behind the back, boom. A lot of people just keep their stick hand forward. I won many years keeping my stick hand forward. When you train with Attilo, you notice he starts to switch like this. So a lot of sport fighters, they don't want to go like this because the first thing people are going to do is hit the fingers. Once you train fighting enough, you see how fast Grandmaster is. Ta -ta 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 -ta. Your mind becomes so fast that the stick is like slow motion. So cock back and you throw a shot, like you cock back okay. and you just try to throw a strike like that, right? If I was to swing back like this, Whoa. you learn all of that stuff. Boom, boom, your hand is alive. If you're here and you try to hit my hand, the hand is not gonna stay there. You know, you try to just go down like this oh. to hit my hand. Boom, people see that. Go ahead again. I know that it's there. Boom, boom, boom. Then I'm in and then there goes all the things that Attila teaches, you know what I mean? The quintada, hold like this and put a hand like this. I call it the triangle quintada. Stick in hand, or if I say it in his accent, stick in hand. And I say it in his accent because I have to remember it myself, right? So here, and he goes here. You could go like this, one, two, three, one, two, then run it back. Notice my hand is here and my stance is like this. So this is part of the style. Then you switch with the hand here and you're doing it like this. Boom. Me, I like to switch the stick and do it. And switch the stick and do it. Because now when we're fighting, you're here, right? That's your stance. You only know how to fight this way. Suddenly I'm here. Suddenly I'm here. Suddenly I switch my hand. Then suddenly I'm in this stance. I have four stances and a lot of problems to present to you. You know what I mean? So that's, that's even before we do a shot. Holding the stick good, right? Yep. This far above my head. Getting in a good stance. Aha. Uh -huh. So remember when I told you to step back and drag? Step back and drag. Now step forward. What Attila will do is take a full step forward. Boom. So this is not what I showed you before, right? Yeah. This is what a lot of people are doing from all the sport fighting. It's like a like a fencing duel. Yeah. When I first started training with him, okay, I'm doing the mother spar real good, you know, I'm, I'm going in and I'm doing my stuff, but I didn't understand the stepping aspect and that's the important part of his whole game because I'm stepping back like this. When he's advancing on me, I'm going, because this is how I learn how to fight. I got to keep my good side, you know, I cannot switch. I have to keep my good side forward. Now you learn how to have every side as a good side. How to switch. So, yeah. So then when he's going, boom, 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 move, boom, 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 move. When he tells you to move, it's not move like this, it's move, I'm good here, I'm good here. Mm -hmm. When I train, I make sure I train both sides, move here, move here, move here. When I want to switch, boom. So if I'm here in my stance, I'll strike one, boom, strike two, boom, strike here, boom, three, boom, ha, boom, and I'm here. Boom, aha, bang, aha, bang. So that opened up my game with him, okay? You strike me here, boom. Some of the quickest disarms in the sport aspect of it. We have big gloves on, you have the gear. A lot of these threading manipulations is hard because the rules of the sport aspect, you could only grab for one or two seconds and then they'll go, okay, break up. So you can't really like dance and play. Yeah. So a few things I like to do. Why did we do the, um, the grip drill when we were pulling the sticks? Super common one is the grab and twist. Grab, you hold it real tight. When you hold this real tight, when I twist, it's gonna raise your arm because you're not opening your hand and letting it rotate. You're gripping it strong, we're fighting. So grip it real strong. When I turn like this, there goes that. So strike me again. Ah, boom, grab and twist. Boom, 
like that, whether you have the glove or not, it still hurts, right? It'll hurt more. Go ahead, strike. Boom, if you do this, what? bam, to the knuckle. Oh. But a lot of times, if you have the gloves on in the sport aspect, the stuff that we're training that we know will hurt, it's a little bit padded, so then you amend it. So part of what I was doing with the Tillow system is amending it for actual combative application for the sport aspect when the guy is not gonna be destroyed with one shot. He can take shots because we have the padding on, you know what I'm saying? So you throw the strike, uh -huh, boom, boom. I just pin it here, right at the base of the glove, and then it's me against you. Who has more muscles? Who was doing this? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So strike. Strike, boom. Boom. Maybe I'll come out here and hit you with one of those big body shots. Boom. When I still have your stick, maybe you'll forget about that. And you see it coming, you'll do something to defend it, you know it's gonna hurt. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So the, I, I'm always monitoring that and a little bit of muscle and training and grip helps a lot of times, right? So one, strike. Grab and twist is a real common one that I think works real good in the sport aspect of it, right? Yeah. Strike again. Boom. This grip is important, right? I call this like the, the lock and key. The lock and key, boom. And I just turn, boom. That shoulder, yeah. So a lot of times when you throw the strike, it's not good to go like that. Why? You're going to be hitting me strong. It might break through my grip, you know what I mean? So when I do it, it's like, let's say I'm throwing, if you're throwing an egg at me, and I'm like catching it so it doesn't break. Right? So when you're throwing it, right, it's mine. It's like I go to you and I wait to the very end. People always want to block like this, throw the strike. Oh, I'm scared, you know, keep it away from me. Attilo keeps his stick so close because this is he's hiding behind his shield, right? So you throw again, you start to learn and not be afraid because this makes yeah. you almost invincible once your stick is here. The hand, you know what I mean? So you go here, strike, boom, this is mine already. I just turn up a little bit and I just use my whole body power against your wrist. It's like a, a classic Kodakash, like that, but I just do it with my whole body. It's powerful movement. Okay, so again. So I see it coming and I keep it to me. Ooh. Yeah, you know, that's after you decorate it. The last one we'll do is the famous, we call it the hitchhiker one. So you throw the strike. Okay. Commonly, the people do it like this they take their stick away. Hitchhiker, we call hitchhiker because like, oh, call a cab, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a super good move, but a lot of times when we're in the middle of a fight, you throw the shot, they try to do it, but the defense to this is what I want you to do is turn your palm facing down. So like this? Uh-huh. And now act like you're thrusting me and stabbing me. If your arm, there's no more wrist. That's how you defend it, okay? So a lot of veterans know how to defend that. So you try to hit me here, they'll try to catch it, and immediately you twist and push it, and then they'll go, break, break. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they want to allow you to lock behind mm -hmm. after he pushes in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, real fast. As some refs don't even like, mm -hmm. they're so like, oh, don't even touch. It's kind of like, bro, come on. Uh. I can do that for like one second, right? You so you throw the strike. So what's important? Boom! This bottom part that's part of Grandmaster Attilo's system. I was always doing the hitchhiker like this and making sure I was getting in real close and getting it. If you pushed in and defended it, I would kind of abandon it and just keep fighting. Mm -mm. Now, boom! When Grandmaster stays here like this, you're pushing down and popping at the same time. So it kind of like, it's hard for you to, to push in push in like that because mm -hmm. he has that extra there, you know what I mean? So here, boom, boom. And this is a disarm that I've hit a lot of people with. And then suddenly he just upped it to level, you know, level 9,000, <laughs> you know? Boom, on this side, you got the backhand shot, boom. A lot of people, you see these disarms and this stuff like that. We have the gloves on and it's going too fast and, and I'm not going to be able to thread my hand like that. You know what I'm saying? So as soon as you hit, go. Boom. What I like to do is just charge in like this. So I, I like kind of check your hand, monitor your hand, and then I use my forearm and then we just clash. Boom. Like I keep it to your chest like that. So what I'm going to do is see the thumb of your, like right there, like the soft part of your thumb, the pad of your thumb. I'm going to peel it off while I'm pressing this against your body but I do it in a clashing setting, like boom, like two bulls, you know? Yeah. Because when you're getting into like a, the sport aspect of it, I like to stay out here and make a beautiful dueling fight. It doesn't always happen. You call them the bulls. Okay, ready, go. <laughs> like that. Yeah. So to remedy that, 
when you have a backhand shot, it's so fast. When would you get this backhand shot? You kind of like bait it out. So me and you were fighting, I kind of be on this side on purpose and I'm peppering you up. I know this is here. I know you're going to either throw one of those soft abanico shots or you're just going to try to do something like this because most times people don't switch because you're right-handed. If you switch, okay, but you, that'll probably be your weekend. In the middle of your switch, I'll try to pop it. You know what I mean? I'm here, you try to go for this strike. Boom! Right here. You don't block it like this because that's the bony part. You block it like this because this is your muscly part. You know what I mean? Uh, you don't go with your elbow because you will never do that again. <laughs> now with the rib. You kind of have to like time it and stuff it, you know? So when people are training with the sticks, what happens after a while? Click, ow, oh my God, and you're out for like three days, ow. You have to learn that when you swing with a stick, you're definitely not gonna catch it, but if you're in a certain position, you could definitely stop the velocity before it begins. So you learn to be a little bit more hardened with it. Uh, and his style is all about boom. If you notice when we're doing the trapping, right? Uh, just with your left hand, grab my wrist. Boom, like that. Lock with this. Boom, I move this. Stuff the stick with your hand. That's part of the trapping that he brings you like that, boom. So you can stop the stick with your hand, but not like, you know, fake movie stuff. But if you were kind of close and you try to go for a shot, I could definitely monitor it. So that's part of it, right? You throw a shot on this side, boom, I block and I pin it to your chest. While I pin it there, I pull it out, right? And then I just like kind of stomp down at the same time. Yeah, right? We'll do it on this side. I'll put you on this side, right? So we're here, throw a shot on this side. Oh, my block. Oh, my put it here, right? I have it pinned to his chest and I stop that too. I pull it out and then I do a stomp. I don't want to do like a twist. I just want to pull it straight out and I'm using your body because most of the time no one is going to be leaning backwards. Lean forward on me because you're another uh, person that's not wanting to lose. So I use the ego of uh, another individual. Come on, we're fighting. Boom. I knew you were going to do that because I needed you to press against me. You know what I mean? You use the, oh, I'm, not, I'm not a wuss. Let's fight. I knew you would do that. You know what I mean? So a smarter person will kind of like fight this way. But if you strike this way, boom, boom, we start to have the fight. Maybe I could even use my helmet to get some space and do it. Not for a headbutt, but just to connect with you to get some space. So that's little tricks that I learned from Attilo style, but I formed it into, um, I transitioned it and like, uh, What's the word? I kind of amend it a little bit to the, the sport aspect of it. You know what I mean? So, yeah. When you strike hands, shake! Uh, Disarm, repeat the thing. I'm also this. You strike me. Disarm, repeat the thing. Uh -huh. Very fast. Uh -huh. Yeah. One side, shake! Mm -hmm. Catch it. Slap the left. Sometimes you're going to catch. One more break. The training, the training, one break. We stay. We put one. Strike. We put two. Or you know what? One break. This is only practice. So that you know how to train to touch the stick. Mm. 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 The most important. What you strike me? Now, if you will do this, do do the test. Just shake. What you okay? With you. You know, really have to the key. And this is to the head. And then, what's this? Never have a chance. Never have a chance. Never have a chance. All right, so once again, Felix Condi Jr. Um, you can find me at facebook.com slash catchboxingmma, youtube.com slash catchboxingmma, at catchboxingmma on Instagram, and those are all my social medias. I put up IT boxing, kickboxing, MMA, no gi jiu jitsu, and of course, uh, I train under the great grandmaster, um, Attila Pinituak, you know what I mean? Uh, so that's how you find me, and uh, it's very important. FMA, like. Oh, 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 oh,